Britishness is core to the Mini brand. So for the launch of the all new Mini Countryman, Mini smartly brought us to the exceedingly quaint English countryside. Not coincidentally, these narrow winding roads offer a great opportunity to experience the countryman's steering and handling attributes. Turn the wheel and there's immediate reactions from the chassis. It just feels agile, though somewhat less playful than the Mini Cooper hardtop that we know and love. And again, compared to most compact SUVs, the countryman is a day at Wally World. Helping support the Countryman's agile handling and minimal body roll is a suspension that, while taut, is not abusive. I've been driving around England's beautiful roadways now for many hours, and uh, I feel just fine. I could do this for hours and hours more, though I might need some figgy pudding to power me through. I don't even know, is that a thing? Is England still into figgy pudding? floor the accelerator and you'll notice that acceleration is good but not amazing. That has to do with the powertrain. It has the exact same output as the smaller Cooper hardtop, 189 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque, except the Countryman has to haul around an extra 683 pounds plus an extra 163 pounds on top of that if you have all-wheel drive. Hefty. Despite all that heft, the Countryman S accelerates from 0 to 60 in the low 7 second range. But if you choose the base Cooper with its mm, comparatively anemic 3 cylinder engine, that run is going to take about 9.5 seconds and that's just plain slow. Fun fact, aside from the John Cooper Works version of the Countryman, the fastest Countryman, the Hybrid. It'll do 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds and also cover 14 miles under pure electric range. Handling power delivery in the Countryman lineup is a standard six-speed manual transmission, but in this car we've got the eight-speed automatic and it works just fine. Gear shifts are nice and smooth and it reacts quickly to throttle inputs so you can get the power you need when you need it. Whee! Compared to the first generation Countryman, this Countryman looks sad and angry. It's also physically larger, a fact vividly illustrated on the previously mentioned narrow English roads. It's kind of odd driving a Mini that takes up this much space. The upside of its expanded dimensions is enhanced interior space. This is the first Mini I've driven where I can actually sit behind myself without issue. Headroom is great in all positions, even the middle rear seat, which for the first time borders on inhabitable. There is a center hump to contend with back there, and with three passengers aboard, it's going to feel cramped, but the latest Countryman is the closest we've seen to a five-passenger Mini. I'm sorry, Mini. Luggage space has also grown up by 30% to 17.6 cubic feet behind the rear seats. With the second row seats that slide, recline, and fold mostly flat, it's easy to accommodate varying amounts of gear. A new foot-activated power hatch also adds a touch of convenience, though actually activating it can be a little bit tricky. I'm told a swift kick is the play. Don't wave a foot under there, swift kick. To demonstrate the prowess of the Countryman's all-four all-wheel drive system, we did get to drive on an off-road course. Though, to be fair, with a Camry and a bad attitude, I probably could have made it through there just fine. Thanks to muddy ruts, the Mini Cooper Countryman burned through its 6.5 inches of ground clearance really quickly, but aside from some lightly scraped underbody panels, the all-wheel drive system did a really good job dragging us through gushy mud and up slippery hills. Trips to the trailhead should be no problem. As for pricing, the Mini Countryman with the three-cylinder engine starts at around $27,000, including destination, while this Countryman S begins closer to $30,000 with $2,000 tacked on for either model if you want to add all-wheel drive. If that sounds expensive for a Mini Countryman, just remember that the standard equipment roster is generous and lengthy. Just uh, roll the list. A lot of stuff, right? Rural England is a lovely place to drive, 
but it highlights just how massive the Countryman is for a car with a mini badge on it. It might be a problem for purists who think minis ought to be small, but if you talk to the folks who run the company, they'll tell you they didn't build this car for the purists, they built it for actual customers who wanted a larger, more refined Countryman. So if the concept of a burly Mini bothers you, go out and voice your complaint by buying one of these still relatively small Mini Cooper hardtops. But if you like your English exports delivered in American proportions, it won't be long before the Countryman lands in your country, man. <laughs>